Team P Bill to yeah. talk about yeah. all those things. Yeah. Welcome everybody to Council Checkup, uh, <coughs> opportunity where we get to talk about uh, what's happening with our local town council in Nipawa. We have a variety of councillors and other members that provide service in this community, such as RCMP, uh, come on occasion. Today we are delighted to have our Mayor, Blake McCutcheon, with us. Uh, good afternoon, Blake. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Excellent. So, um, welcome viewing audience. And uh, wow, it's October. I know. T it's October. I know. <laughs> Believe that. Uh, it's just moving on. So uh, let's talk about what's happened since the last time we talked. Okay. Uh, I was, I, maybe I'll just start off by saying I was talking to a group of, uh, an, uh, of new uh, high life workers. They, they, come into the, they come into Winnipeg from the Philippines yeah. and they yeah. quarantine there for two yeah. weeks. And I always get to speak to them. And then Ashley always speaks to them on behalf of the town, and then sometimes we have the RCMP there or, uh, or some other people. But anyhow, t yesterday it was just myself and, and Ashley. But, you know, I was thinking, I, I'm, I'm always, uh, every time I talk to them, I, I just say, wow. Eh? I mean, here, they, here they've flown 12,000 kilometers, you know, and they're, and they're, it's incredible. you know what, and uh, yeah, I mean, they're coming to a whole new world, right? I mean, this is, I always tell them how much courage they have to, to come and do this, right? And, um, uh, and it's interesting because Ashley, uh, who is our uh, is our person of, in the office there, Ashley just got her Canadian citizenship, so she was oh, very excited, cool. and she even told that to the, these people in the, on yeah. the Zoom, right? But she was saying it's been six years since she's seen her parents, and I was thinking, oh, well, I you know, know that's the, been the horrible sacrifice, for a number of them. the sacrifice that they give mm -hmm. to come to a new country and to and to, to you know to for the betterment of, of their children and for the next generation, right? So that's, uh, I always think about that lots, you know, when, when we have all our, I mean, we're in a pandemic and we're in orange again now. And, you know, a lot of people are feeling like their rights are being violated. And I was just thinking, you know what, at the end of the day, we're still a very fortunate country and a very fortunate society. Uh, well, and <coughs> I, I, further to that, um, COVID has really impacted that ability. There's no question that there's separation anxiety. Yeah. People have made a choice here. Uh, it's not like a refugee situation where people are fleeing yeah. horrendous situations. Yeah. Uh, our, our, our immigrants here have made conscious choices to leave where they, where they are born, or, born and raised for those opportunities. And it does create some separation, but COVID hasn't helped. Right. Uh, and, and with our, our changing <coughs> things, I just read something very recently uh, from um, uh, the astrophysicist uh, Tyson, I f forget his first two okay, names, okay. Uh, saying, look, you've got to recognize science is evolving. Yes. We don't always know the answer, and we should be saying more often, we don't know, but yep. we're trying to find out. Yep, I agree. And so he says it's not, uh, it's not <coughs> without reason that one day it's mass, next day not, then it's back again, because as things evolve and we find out new things, we move in that direction. But it's really frustrating for local people, especially when we've had a taste yes. of maybe moving forward <laughs> and suddenly that yeah. taste is removed yeah, and point. it is challenging and we're yeah. seeing that within our province. We've got tremendous buy-in and cooperation from a number of people. Uh, we have a uh, faction for a variety of reasons uh, which are not seeing fit to do that at this point in time. And yep. uh, we just have to work through that and yep. there are consequences yep. for that. We're seeing the effect on on our our healthcare system. Yes, with with uh, really <coughs> needing uh, those healthcare professionals, we were short according to to our our, our stats before. Yes, we're even shorter now. Yeah, it, it's we just take one day at a time, do the best we can. No, I agree. But that that's an interesting comment because Nipawa, without question, we can't ignore the fact that we have been majorly impacted as a community yes. and area. Yeah. With our with our newcomers who've come over, absolutely uh, uh, a blessing. Yeah. Um, but if you want, okay. So what could I? If you want to, I guess maybe I could lead off by saying, you know what? I, and I've talked about this before, but it, you know what? I, it's nice to start seeing the results, right? Because I mean, I've sat in this chair before, and I've told people now that I understand it. Like we've spent millions of dollars in infrastructure, right? We spent, you know, mm -hmm. I think I said the other day, twenty five million dollars between the lagoons and the water reservoir, RCMP, fire hall. And I, you know, and, and I think people are going, well, that's great, and we need all that, but you know, so now what? So now, so today, it's exciting because I can say, you know what, you, you can just see the fruition of that now, right? Because it, let's take a look at housing, for example. So in the housing, we, you know, we had 
when I came on to council three years ago, the really the CN was still on the back burner, but it was it was there, and Dimitri was building his apartment block, or he was getting underway. But really, after that, there wasn't much. So now, as uh, as we sit here today, <coughs> we have the Kin Plus opening November first. I understand. We have uh, Mr. Aikens on the old Murray property moving forward. Yes, with, with that's, his, that's just a recent. Yeah, thing. with his forty-some unit. Again, that's been on the table, but he's finally he's pulled the he's pulled the decision to go ahead with that. Uh, we have the CN property, which has forty-five units on, and they're well underway. I think there's either six or seven people already moved into their houses. I, I just passed it this morning. I Curbs know. are in now, I know. and more housing yeah, are and being and built. Pavements coming next week or tomorrow or, f or Monday. They're coming from. Oh, they're up wow. in the par right now. Um, and then you take. Uh, the the Dimitri High Life, uh, I call it the bunkhouse build, where they were putting in those four units there that each have 32 uh, single bedrooms in them. So that's a total of 128. Uh, Crescent Creek across the street in the old uh, Hawken property, uh, they're at the final stages of getting approval to uh, get underway with their modular park. And that has the potential for over uh, over 100 units for sure that can go in there. Wow. So you know what? When you start adding it up, we are we are getting close to 400 units. Well, and there's also <laughs> that sort of uh, put the toes in the water testing thing from the Bray. Yes, proposal. Yes. Yeah, and there's I mean, really nothing on the table yeah. right now from the Brays. But, but the, you know, these other things are on the table. These are these are written in. Well, yeah, they're they're moving forward, and the longest one of them will be Crescent Creek, I guess, because they have to get their infrastructure yeah. and they have to get their water, and that'll be their responsibility. Everything's there for them, but they have to get it to their into their units but everything else is there so even even without them we're getting close to 300 so and you know that that, that doesn't count uh, I mean Eastview still has a few lots there and uh, and of course now we also have um, uh, I, I don't I guess it's the Bernie group that is mo is moving forward with their seven or eight units out of the old uh, hatchery chicken barns there uh, on Dominion Road on the other side of the Bray property they're going in there with a the development and they're going to create a uh, retirement community with uh, I think they're starting off with seven or eight units. No, I haven't heard about that. Okay, now, where yeah. where where's that again? Is that That's on going the north down side of Veterans Way? No, we're back on Dominion Road, uh, going down past Tim Hortons. Oh. So on one side you had the chicken barns, the braids, oh, and yes. on the other side they always it was called the hatchery. You know, so you had those old you had those old where buildings. that old office building. Yeah. So they okay. so they've stepped in there and they're. And who's that? that? This is a it's a it's a group of uh, of uh, families from Bernie. <gasps> Ah yes, yeah. I, I, I yeah, I've it's heard been, of yeah, that. Yeah, it's been in the paper, but anyhow, it's it's underway now too. So that'll that'll happen in the next year, and and that 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 has the potential to get bigger too, because that's a big piece of property. So yeah, well, there's some commercial down there as well, like Wachowski's. Yeah, yeah Wachowski's is there. Uh, Garth White has something there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, this is um, so that you know, that it re I'm really pleased to be able to say that because that's actually a tremendous <coughs> number of vacant opportunities, and, and we're going to need it. I mean, this town is. We've said it for so long, right? Yeah. And I mean, High Life's already said that they want to get bigger and better. They want to add 200 people to their line next year. Uh, you know, so that's going to be... Wow. So when, when you take a look <coughs> at what an impact of one industry has done in a community, I mean, we are, we are essentially driven by one industry. Yeah, but it, there's room for a lot more. But I'm hoping that's exactly right, Don. I'm hoping now that, you know, that people can see that, you know, we have all these units coming on stream. And you're right, maybe Braze or maybe somebody else will step up that we don't even know about yet. But I mean, now when an industry is looking at maybe coming to town, because we have the infrastructure, right? We have everything they need. Maybe they're going to go, well, you know, this is great. I mean, now you guys even have even have space for us, right? That, uh, if someone needs to move in here and buy something or build something. or So, uh, I, yeah, I mean, that's always been our goal. Well, and there's still room <coughs> along CN property for commercial and Absolutely. other areas Absolutely. for commercial. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's really exciting. And... Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, our school system uh, is not at capacity yet. I mean, it's getting closed, but I mean, it's certainly not as tight as it was before the new school. I mean, and but it comes it's getting more kids all the time. When I uh, I saw the number of kindergarten classes I coming know, in this I year, know, I know. that's just a sign of things to come. I know, and the hospital. I mean, people always yeah. ask us about that or medical upgrades, and I, I mean, the only answer I can give is that we're hopeful, right? We're hopeful. Yeah, right? we're we're <laughs> seeing. Uh, <coughs> bits of news releases as yeah. they work through yeah. different parts yeah. of the province. Yeah, and we're hoping someday we'll be one of those. Maybe. But you know what? Yeah. We, we've just, yeah. It is what it is. But you know, we're such a, you know, I mean, how many, I mean, north, there, there's nobody else like us north of the number one for no. sure. And I think no. even going into southern Manitoba, I think in terms of growth rate, I think we, we'll probably still might be number one in terms of growth rate. Well, <coughs> I think I look at some of the other communities that are have benefited from the new growth 
but if not, as Nipua has done over at least the past two councils, um, looked at, we need to beef up our infrastructure, the whole project for the lagoons to be able, when I, we had Denis here, and yes. I said, so what happens if we go to 7,000? He said, we throw in more discs. I know, exactly. The, the <laughs> fact that we've looked at technology yeah. that can yeah. help us move forward and, yeah. and accommodate the growth, because that's really the biggest challenge with any yeah. small community yeah. that's been stable for so long. Yeah. New growth, yeah. how do we handle that? Yeah. And that, you know, that's something I, you got to give full credit to past councils. You got to give full credit to this current administration because yeah. they were around yeah. for quite a while now. They have been so committed to, to, to developing for the future, right? Everything, they see everything in their vision of out 10 to 15 years, right? What do we need to do to be here in 10 or 15 years? I, I think that's <coughs> important. And I think you, you, every year you have to look at the next 10 or 15. Yeah. Every year, you can't just say, wait for year five yeah, to yeah. start doing that yeah. we look at we've had a brand new fire hall we're getting a brand new fairly large uh, rcmp yep. build yep yeah it's going to be uh, about twice the size all and, those yeah. all those other uh kinds of of things happening v uh, very exciting and then you know you take so now that you know that was one big part of our puzzle and uh, was 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 housing and then, i mean it's not fixed yet but i mean it, it's yeah. certainly a step in the right direction of course the other thing was rec right i mean rec got put on the back burner recreation got put on the back mm -hmm. burner i mean we did get the bike park but that just happened because of that was more serendipitous yeah that was more anything else yeah. exactly so but the other things that have been on the plate you know whether it be the tennis courts pickleball courts or or the pool uh that 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 again was put on the back burner because all the money was being shoveled into our infrastructure so again now that we've kind of got that positioned and the, the money set aside or or already spent uh, now we can turn and as i don't know if i don't know if it was that the last when we had our last council chat had we had our pres i don't think so you hadn't we hadn't had our presentation yet for the river bend right i don't no. think no. no so you know we had the presentation at our first october meeting yes it was so it, and so people had a chance to come in and we had a few people come in and it, all the boards were up and it was just showing uh, how we want to develop River Bend Park. Yeah, and now <coughs> I saw something in the paper. Yes, yeah. Well, well ma most people would have seen that yeah. in the paper yeah. about the, the movement in terms of moving uh, east with yes. the pool in yes. that area. Yes. Yeah, it became a really a, a big thing about... Uh, uh, disabilities, right? That people just didn't need to, you know, we need to be able to get in there yeah. with wheelchairs and, yeah. and bigger vehicles. And, and it, changing the parking area yes. there and putting the green space yeah. more on that north side. Yes, and, and I really like that idea. And I really like how, and that was Denis and Nicole and, and the group of people at the table there who developed that area where the parking lot is now uh, to turn it into more of an area for for children to go in there and play in little streams and well and you <coughs> see uh, what i what i lo always worried about was we had that lovely little play I know, area I know. but cars and everything and any yeah. events yeah. whereas now that will not be that same kind yeah. of challenge and like our original plan did have we did try to get in because we thought it was a very local you know a local area of the town and you know the campground's not too mm -hmm. far away the original plan did have a pickleball and tennis court in there Yes. But once you got it all put down on paper and you started getting out there with it, and we actually as a council, we went out there and Denis kind of staked it out for us and showed us everything. It was going to be way too tight. It was just too tight. Like, you know, so that's why <coughs> the move for the, 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 the replacement of the two courts we lost yes. out there and the pickleball courts. Because yeah. I have heard some feedback. People have okay. said, well, how come it's going out there? Right. How come it's not more local? Right. Well, you know. So what? how come? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, we own that property. I mean, that's always a, it's always important that we we own that property where mm -hmm. it's going in. We also have the we also have the volleyball court out there. We have a basketball court out there. We have a couple of swings out there, um, and it was um, we because we were looking at River Bend and because it didn't work, we still wanted to move forward, and. Um, and we've always had that in our, we've always had that as part of uh, one of our options, right? I mean, we yeah. you look around town, you yes. say, well, this is option one, this is option two, or maybe this. So when we realized that River Bend wasn't going to work, and yet we, we have the money available, and that some of this money has to be spent because it is government money, by certain dates, we just said, okay, let's take a look out there again. So we did, and at the end of the day, and uh, we 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 have the we have the land and we actually have parking too, which is really important. I don't know if you've been out there lately, but no, I we've created a really big parking area too. It's really neat. They've put uh, put bol big big boulders all the way around. It looks very attractive. It fits right into the community. So how can it <coughs> can it connect to the Park Lake piece? 
like you can walk you can walk over down the bridge. That, yeah. yeah you can walk over that bridge right <clears throat> and denise plan is to pave all that or or do asphalt or something yeah. right? he wants to clean all that up eh? so so at the end of the day we had that we needed to spend the money we we, we had the availability because we were ripping up uh, davidson street that that gave us the fill that we needed to take okay. it over there and get the base put in and we'd be ready for spring uh, we still have the old fencing from the old tennis courts that were on Mountain Avenue there. Oh, excellent. There. Okay. So, yeah, so now... That's very important when you're looking at back. And tennis. then when we've... So on our initial survey, we've made the decision that we're... That one was two tennis courts, of course, yeah. many, many years ago. This The decision this time is it's going to obviously have the same fence around it. So it's going to be one tennis court. The second tennis court that was on the old one will now be turned into four pickleball courts because you can put four, four pickleball courts into one tennis court. Oh, I see. Okay. And we what did, about another tennis court? Well, exactly. Is there room out there? Or? There would be room out there, but I think our thinking is, and I mean, obviously things can change, yeah. but if we, first of all, let's, let's get a feel for it. So this thing will be ready by, uh, it'll start in May, just let's say by July or August, everything's up and running. So I would think by 2023, that by maybe the winter of 2022, you could say, okay, this tennis court is being overused. Right, you know what? We just don't. We need we need another one. Or the pickleball courts that worked out really well, and we're good to go. Or we might even say, "Wow, we didn't." Because pickleball is an exp it's even young people. It's not. A, I used to think it was a senior no, thing. No, I'm I'm hearing all sorts of I people know. saying they really like. I know. So pickleball. you know. So we'll find that out. And then if we find out that we need another tennis court, or we need another pickleball court. Well, I mean, we already know we need another basketball court. So so we'll then then we'll go back to our options. Right, option three, option four. Maybe we'll still look back at the flats and do something. Because the flats. Have had been looked at originally yeah. as really a key yeah. area yeah. where a lot of, yeah. of but then we had the soccer things. fields and and so what else what what room is left in the flats well now, i think is there any flood issue there we need to be i aware? think at the end of the day what we see now in the flats is leaving it as is but where the skating rink is yeah we're turning that into hard so we could put basketball there in the summer and then in the winter time flooding yeah yeah. Skating. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then you can look out at the CN property. You can look into, uh, I don't know if there's room up at the north end, but you know what? We'd, we'd, uh, maybe down at the museum. Uh, we mm -hmm. have The museum has approached us and said they have some land available there. Like the next tennis court, the next pickleball court, the next basketball court. I mean, it, it's, we're going to try to spread it out, right? I mean, and, and yeah. I mean, <coughs> that, that, that's one way of, like, some communities do have it spread. Some, Localized, yeah. and of course, yeah. you're having family. You want to do things. Yeah. Localization of, yeah. of of those facilities yeah. is is convenient. Uh, clearly, here that's we don't really have an area where we could localize everything. Then no. that's what you're saying. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and even if we could, yeah, I, I, I like what I like the plan. I think it's nice to give okay. it, every, have each part of the community have a chance where they don't have to get in a car or, or walk as far or so. I, I think it's worked out well. And of course now. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of money that, and we don't have that money yet. We're going to have to figure out how to save for that money or get grants for that money is the pool, right? I mean, that's, that's a big undertaking, right? Because to yes. bring it up to accessibility standards is basically starting over there because nothing really works well when it comes to, uh, to accessibility. So mm -hmm. that, that'll be a big ticket item. Well, and the other thing is too, uh, I, if I'm correct about interpreting the plans, you're not going to change the existing structure you're adding on correct? yes we're adding on although that might change once we get a few more engineering studies like we know we've had the preliminary look but they might come in and go you know what because it's cinder block a eh, that building right and they might come in and go eh, you know guys if you, you know so that, that that hasn't been quite decided yet but so so the building might change but yeah. the actual pool itself oh no the pool stay oh sorry the pool stays exactly the same it is and then the water slide and its little area pool will be right to the east there, to the right? east yeah. okay but yeah. but with the building Probably it might make sense to look at something a simpler yeah. structure yeah. with yeah. better yeah. insulation yeah. accessibility. Yeah. And, and, oh, it has to be. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. we couldn't even build it without. Yeah. So we're hoping to get some grant money on that, and we do have some money in the bank. But when would you look at if you got the money? When would you look at because you want to do it off season, not on season. The water slide is actually up for discussion right now. I think it that will happen first. Like, okay. it, I think it can be put in right away because, you know, we can still ex live with our existing yeah. building. And then the next step after that, so then we'd have the pool, we'd have the water slide, and then we could, you know, gain enough cash to go ahead and do the, the building okay. and the parking lot. And all I, that, I so. think it's, it's a great facility. We've had the discussion prior about 
the amount of usage that we're required to maintain yeah. an indoor pool, and that's just not feasible. No, we've seen statistics from towns like yeah. Swan River and things like that that have tried that, and it, you, you, we need to be, I know 6,000 sounds big, but it's not even close to being big yeah. enough to, yeah. to make it fly, so yeah. yeah. Okay. No, so I mean, that's really exciting, and yeah, I mean, I mean these, are, these are great things, and you know, just happen to be, you know, it's actually a good time to be on council because a lot of the grunt work was done by the previous council and administration where they got all of this infrastructure mm -hmm. put into place and now, you know. Started now, those, yep, all those processes. Yep, yep, so. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of work was done there to, to, to move, move ahead on that. Tell me something. Um, now that we've done the micro sealing. Yes. Uh, what's the verdict so far? I mean, well, you know, I keep going back to, mm -hmm, now I can't think of the street. What's the one uh, called the going out to the golf course? I mean, that was done seven years ago. Yes. Uh, anyhow, whatever it's called, sorry. And uh, it's held up reasonably well. So, I mean, we do know, and the people that came in to do it, I mean, they identified spots. They identified spots on Hamilton Street down there uh, further west saying, you know what, we're not even going to try here because we know yeah. it'll just collapse. Yeah. And, um, and we know that that's going to occur so that's the decision no we're going to i'm i'm certainly very optimistic that we're going to continue to move forward we ended up spending about i think around three hundred and fifty four hundred thousand dollars this year on micro ceiling but we got a lot we got a lot of bang for our buck because don't forget four hundred thousand dollars in ripping a street apart only does one block so you know what when yeah. we when we did this if you look over on fourth and fifth and brown and hamilton and like we did a, we did a lot of micro ceiling so well and <coughs> if on those streets that it can work on yeah uh, and and has some longevity. I guess yeah. it helps in that process. Yeah. And Davidson, of course. I mean, Davidson had to get ripped apart because of the Kinsman Plus going on up there. Uh, so uh, and because of the huge backlog of all, like we do have Maple Leaf coming to do uh, our uh, CN property, and they're yeah. at Commerce. They're going to do some work on Commerce Street, and we have some other little fixes up around town too. But then they say they're done. They're just way too busy, and so we can't get them interested in doing. Our Davidson, so we'll just have to turn it back to gravel for the winter, and uh, hopefully we get enough snow on it that it looks presentable, and and then again it'll so get done. So, does the town have a plan going forward with these streets that are identified? Yeah. To get them done one at a time, or is it just well, I guess we'll do it whenever we can? Is there actually no? Actually, the plan is just being put into place now. So okay. that we have asked, and I mean, administration has so much on their plate, but we have asked administration over the winter to give us a five-year plan. Just to show us what they, you know, what would be, I mean, someone like Denis, he, he knows a lot about the, yeah. the, what's going on in the ground with the water lines and the sewer lines and, and all that. And, and what, there's no point in micro sealing that because it's going to have to get ripped apart or here. Any, yeah. yeah, at yeah. some point yeah. anyway. So we'll, so we'll have a much better idea in the spring and then, yeah, mm -hmm. I think we'll start bringing that into place. But you know what? There's just so much going on, right? I mean, I mean, I've heard so many people say that. Wow, I mean, you can't move in this town without tripping over a dump truck or a. Well, uh, when you <coughs> start to look at all the construction, the building that's going on here. Oh yeah, yeah go ahead. I was just going to say, and don't forget, we just read out at uh, our council meeting on Tuesday. Uh, I mean, Park Lake is it, it's a done deal. It's well, it's going to be well underway here right away. I mean. Uh, They've, really? They, that's, yeah, they, I was going to ask yeah. you an update on that. So just think of that. So that's this fall. That's so they've they've, they've made the decision to use Brown Avenue as their as their which is the street that you know the post mm -hmm. office street, yeah. but, but obviously going south there. They've decided they looked at other areas, but they decided to use that street. And because we have so much of the dirt taken out there for our water reservoir, they're actually going to use that dirt and, and kind of create a ramp there so they can get into Park Lake and do all the work they have to do. Now, do they have to clean out some of that to begin with? Yes. Yeah, they, not they a lot. Don't forget, don't forget the rules of the federal government, right, in the disaster yeah. fund. The rules are not to, to bring it back to where it was before the flood. Well, oh, yeah, I'm just talking yeah. about some of the crap in the bottom of the... Yeah, oh, no, that has to go. That's yeah. environmental. Yeah, yeah, the environmental yeah. stuff. But yeah, otherwise, but a, but they're not lot, changing no. the, the contour, the shape. Or they're just... Yeah, they're going to rebuild. Out, right? They're going to rebuild all the berms and all yeah. that. And, I mean, they will clean it up. But, I mean, yeah. a lot of people have said, why don't you lower that lake by 10 feet, right? Yeah. And, and make it... But we it can't do, do that. Well, we could, but it would cost the town of Nepal about $2 million because it's nothing to do with with the disaster relief money, right? Okay. Uh, the one thing that we are, are discussing now is getting in a, on the north shore of Park Lake, getting a, and that might have to come out of our pockets yet, that's still a discussion where you could put kayaks and canoes in there. 
So that would be great. How would you, what, what a ramp or something? Yeah, there, there is a spot there where you could uh, and actually, yeah. Do you want that kind of traffic on the lake? I think it would just be on the one side. And you know what, I think that'd be a great idea. I don't, I, you know, I didn't realize that because, you know, I go up to Shoal Lake, yeah. my daughter. That has become a huge thing, kayaking. Very much so. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something we're looking at. It's not written in stone yet, but it's something we're looking at. But, I mean, again, that, and they want to get underway with the bridge this fall going across to Rotary Park because mm -hmm. they want to do that. Um, so they are, they are like this thing, if, if you believe everything that's being told us, and I mean, I'm, you know, always a little skeptical, but they, they really believe they'll be done by the end of 2022. We'll have Park Lake yeah. again. Well, again, I guess we've got to wait for as, the, we've got to wait a, for the water a, to show as up. A, but. As a waterfowl yeah. <laughs> spot and, and other birds come because yeah. the water's there. It's, it's been sorely missed. We don't. You don't know, as Joni Mitchell says, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. <laughs> no, right? that's true. And I've heard so many people say that. Uh, just an amazing little resource, yeah. a hidden gem. It'd be nice to bring it back. And that's why I look at it think, I understand the kayak canoe thing, yeah. but. Yeah. And, really and it may that? not happen. It's, 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 some of these things are still just on the table. Yeah. And you know what? I, we have had, I've had a couple of people say to me, okay, guys, what were you doing here? You micro sealed Brown Avenue, and now you're going to send 20 trucks down in a day. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, that is for a very short period of time. And Disaster Relief Fund does allow money for any repair to any roads that are damaged. Well, it'll also be a, t it will be a test for the microsite. Yeah, it would be a test. Yeah, you're right. And take a look and see how, how, much, yeah, yeah. how much traffic, yeah. heavy traffic that, and, yeah. and we may be surprised. It may still need repairs, yeah. but we may yeah. be surprised yeah. given, okay, that's optimistic for just general car traffic. Yeah, no, I stuff. agree. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you just start thinking about that, right? I mean, with the, with the build, it, I mean, well, just think. You just walk around this town, and where you're not tripping over or some type of construction going on. I mean, well, it's and we look at how low our vacancy rate is, yeah. uh, and people. I have heard people who have wanted to buy here, sell and buy. I know. Had nothing to buy. Had I know. To go elsewhere I know. because there's nothing available to buy. That's a big discussion at our council table right now, and we don't have the answers right now, but we are trying to figure out, and I, I don't even have an answer, it's just a discussion as, you know, what the seniors, right? I mean, there's a lot of seniors that want to, they, you know, my age group are a little bit older, they're saying, okay, you know what, I love my house, but the time has come, I, you know, I don't want to do the stairs anymore, and, you know, but I'd well, like... what about a smaller retirement community? Well, perfect, but where? That, that's our issue, right? Like where, where? Because, you know, if you get to the average person, well, I mean, people like Aspen Lee yeah. and they like yeah. that and Dimitri's, but the first choice is always uh, what's at the post office there, right? Yeah. If, I, if I could have a unit that I could drive my car into and I could step out on the have street. Have a little bit of garden, yep. not much. And I could walk. Yeah. And I could walk. And that's a huge issue we have in this town. So, and then I mean, we're working on it. I don't have the answer, but th that is, that's going to be an important part as we move forward here because, I mean, you know, obviously before High Life, we were an aging town, right? Yeah, we were, and, and a retirement people <laughs> yeah. would come from elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, popped into my head the old fire hall property. You, you had a call for proposals. What's coming? Yeah, up? we have nothing there yet. We kind of put that on a, we kind of put that on hold for a while because the town is still trying to make a decision whether they want to keep it under their umbrella. And do something with it. Right. But okay. again, that there seems to be a lot of stuff at the plate of the town council table right now. So I think that'll be a decision that gets made over the winter. And okay. so for the moment, the request for proposals have not gone out. Um, <clears throat> just to jump ship a bit, we'll yep. get back to, to perhaps other stuff. Um, uh, Christmas is coming. Yes. We typically have had an annual Christmas parade. Do we have any sense if that's... I mean, our, I mean, our wish, our wish is for it to go forward. I mean, it, it's been put in place and it's the 20, that Friday, the 25th, 26th, must be the 25th, whatever the, of November that is, that's the yeah, day it's supposed yeah. to happen. Um, I mean, we're hopeful, but uh, as you know, I mean, we are back in a code orange and um, I guess, you know, being selfish, we live in an area that's had such a They've done such a great job of keeping, you know, the cases down to almost nil in this part of the world, right? Um, so it's it's always that balance, right? How do we how do we move forward with something, but that we don't regret it in two weeks, going like, why did you do that? Yeah. So no decision has been made yet. I mean, right now the decision is to go forward, so I guess that decision is in place. Um, and I guess uh, you know what we always thought we should be giving them at least. Uh, 
three weeks notice that you know so I'm thinking by November 1st we're gonna have to make a decision uh, that would be be fair yeah I, I gather that even if so part of the parade would not be throwing candies that's what I've been told I've been told that is against the policies of the public health yeah. So, yeah so those kinds of things but at least having a parade yeah where, yeah I would think know. it's more about the social distancing right I just you yeah. know what because you know and I'm not you know what the odds of yeah you just have to follow the rules and the rules whether you agree with the rules or disagree with the rules that's, the, that's what they are right yeah. now and we just and we're looking w again we have to operate on the side err on the side of caution yeah it is for the greater good yeah. that we're looking at. Like this. I really believe, and maybe I'm being naive, Don, but I really believe that we are in the last six months of the of the of the true pandemic, right? I mean, I, I, it's too bad that we didn't have a crystal ball and we could have said, you know, March of 2020. You know, by March of 2020, I normalcy is going to start to creep back in, and I think that's not that un. I, I can see that occurring, and I think by next summer, I, you know, I think mm. we're I think we're well, there'll be some interesting things happening. For example, I, I hear that very shortly a lot of the federal support programs will be done. Yes. Uh, people will have to come back into the workforce. Yep. We see inflation's up, but then all the pundits are saying that it will be, they don't feel it will be long term, it will be temporary yep. when things start reestablishing. Yep. We're having all sorts of uh, concerns now about. Uh, climate change and impact. Yep. Uh, I wish they'd open their eyes and recognize that if they cut down on the number of air traffic, I know that's always look at been. the impact it I had with know. COVID. I know how things smog disappeared. All sorts of stuff happened. I know. Maybe they need to. Maybe people need to take a look at. Yes, you may have all the money, but really, do you need to jet everywhere I all know. the time? I know it's interesting. Uh, I, I don't disagree with that. We've discussed that before too. Electronic rail as opposed to electronic cars. I know. Uh, to me. The electronic car system, how can you rely on something that can't even equalize? Everybody has the same kind of charging plug. Well, I know. <laughs> and and I, they had the opportunity. Brand new technology. Yeah. Same plug. Yeah, we've stumbled along, haven't then, we? Yeah. Then, then all the char I, I, when I read that, I thought, that just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> well, the other problem is, and I know, I mean, I'm very much in favor of these things too, but reality su sets in also too, right? And says to you that if, if, if tomorrow we had no gas furnaces and we had nothing but electricity, and tomorrow if we had no gas cars, we, had, we don't even have close to enough power to, to, to give that to people, right? Our, well, I mean, our, our power station. What happens if the rivers dry up? Well, and that is actually a problem this year, right? Because a lot of our, our uh, hydros, uh, I've been told the Manitoba Hydro is going to be showing a fairly substantial loss this year, right? Well, because um, they yeah. have not the power to be able to ship. Yep, that's right. So suddenly we're going to hang everything on one blanket. I know. And you have a major power outage and you I know. have no heat. And people will not be no happy light. if they get rolling blackouts. Uh, well, no. uh, um, so. It's, it, it is interesting, isn't it? I don't, it, I, 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 I don't get it. But why? So, to me, something. They should be working more in hydrogen technology than worrying about electricity. I know. I, I think, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that's another topic and, and another conversation I know, another I know, time. I know. Let's carry on. Um, <laughs> and so then Halloween, I guess, and I, uh, maybe you know more about Halloween than I do. do. I mean, I think, uh, I think the government of Manitoba has more or less said we can go back to a fairly normal Halloween, right? Not the parties and stuff like that. I'm, well, you just have to follow the provincial guidelines. But, but, but masks, social yeah. distancing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how you hand out candy, yeah. yep. um, and and uh, things like bagging things separately. Yes, yes. yes. So that you give them a little bag instead yeah. of you know everybody yeah. grabs into a thing. I haven't. Uh, I or haven't. you are gloved and you hand. I so. know. I haven't talked to my daughter yet because she teaches in a, at HMK. I don't yeah. know what they've made it. I don't know what the decision is yet when it comes to the Halloween parties and people being able to dress up. And well, I, they're in their own cohort, in their own in their yeah, own classroom. So who knows? Yeah, I don't know either. So. Anyhow, that's that's coming too, eh? It's coming. So, along. what else on council? Oh, what else on council? What have we been talking about? Um, I guess you know what. Okay, well, this is you know hard to believe. Tuesday night was was was, was our three year anniversary, right? So we are now officially into our last year. So this is our last year. Of that's council. moved along. I know. I re I remember <laughs> watching those early presentations uh, I know. prior to the yeah, election. I know. So I think. Um, I think, mm, you know, I guess what I, what I would like to, to say when I'm talking to people is like just because we're in our last year doesn't mean we're going to slow down. I mean, I'd like, to, I'd, I'd like to use that analogy that we run to the finish line, yeah. right? Like we're going to continue to move forward. And um, I think what I've learned in my first three years is that uh, 
that this town is is growing so quickly and that there's so much happening that we that the that the strategic planning that everybody keeps talking about is just so important so i just think that's something over the over the next year that the, the council is going to have to that we have to we just even have to look at the parameters of our of our town right uh, and how, how you may have to have you thought about expanding or extending We've looked at that. We looked at that, you know, and it's called annexing. And I mean, it's uh, that's always, and you have to have good. The way you're growing. Yeah, and you have to have good reasons to annex. And I mean, it's uh, it takes a lot of work, and I mean, you have to make sure your rural partners are on board with you. But you know, I mean, it's not a question of if it's a question of when. I mean, at some point, if the town and I can't see anything changing in this town that's going to slow it down. So, um, not all the indicators to date, and there's more stuff. You know, we keep hearing. Of, of people thinking about bringing in stuff so yeah. it's it's yeah. once that starts yeah. I suspect it will be a while before that slows down there's certainly the labor pool here without any question oh, for sure yeah um, anybody coming in there's a labor pool yeah you know at the council level we've I think everybody's pretty comfortable now I mean the fact that we're in our fourth year I think everybody has a good rule their understanding and, and uh, uh, understanding of what they need to do and what they what they need to be part of so that, that's working really well so yeah, I mean, I'm really look. Actually, I'm really looking forward to this last year because I think a lot of things are going to get accomplished in this last well, year. Well, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask you this prior to the just prior to the end of this existing council, uh, like an exit interview. Yeah. So yep. at this point, at the three quarter mark, officially, um, how would you rate how you've done collectively as a council, based on the sort of platforms you came in with? I, well, you know what, I, I, it's funny, we were just, uh, Jody and I were having a conversation this morning. I said, well, I, you know, I don't want to be arrogant about anything that we say, right? I don't want to say, well, look at us, see what we've done. But I, I would suggest on the platforms we came in on, so the platforms that I came in on were, uh, which of some of the other councils too, was transparency, better communication, uh, recreation, and streets. And you know, at that time, I was pretty naive. I should have also put in there housing, <laughs> infrastructure, <laughs> but you know, I didn't have those things there. But so the three things that I was actually putting out there, I, I would say we, we definitely are B. You feel you're more transparent? I don't, I, I don't get people coming to us and saying, how come I didn't know this? How come okay. I didn't know that? Okay. Like, I, I don't know, you tell me, you, you're, a, you're someone in the public. Do you, I, I don't think anything that council's done is, is shocked people. I don't think anyone's gonna go, how come we didn't know that was happening? Like, well, yeah. Like, I, you know, like we did the cemetery, that was very public. That was, you know, the bylaws. You're and still all. getting flack on that? No, not in, no, no, I, I, no, no. I think the only flack we got this year is that we were living in a drought. And because we were living in a drought and because we weren't prepared to pump f treated water, yeah. you know, onto, uh, onto the, 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 those grounds yeah. and the fact that we were doing so much remedial work there, I mean, it, it didn't, I'll have to admit, it didn't look perfect, that's for sure. I mean, when you're, okay. when you're doing that type of work, it, but I mean, again, it's a, it was a five-year plan and we're in our, gonna be going into our third year, so. Yeah, no, um, no, I, you know. So have you had many concerns raised from the public? Yeah, uh, you know what we, you know what we have, you know. I've always said that before. It's no different than running a business. The majority of the people you deal with are fair-minded, and uh, they understand there's going to be the occasional yeah. hiccup. They understand they're not going to like how that actually worked out. But when they take the whole body of the work that's occurring, they go, "Okay, you guys are doing a pretty good job." And then you're always going to have that small vocal minority, and it's absolutely their right. We live in a democracy that you know they're going to say, "Well, you guys could have done better." So. But no, I'm, yeah. So, okay. so you, you'd give it a fairly, if you were to grade it as a, uh, A, B, C, and D? Which, yeah, I would think would a B. Read? I'd go with a B. But I mean, I mean that's, okay. like I said, if that sounds maybe a little self-serving because, I mean, obviously I'm not going to give myself a D probably. So, <laughs> so I, you, you know. heard it here. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm pretty comfortable, so. Uh, what else can I tell you, Don? I mean, it's just, you know, the day-to-day, -day, it's just amazing. You know, you wake up in the morning and you go into the town office and you think, well, you know, this is, you know, we don't have a council meeting and I don't have an evergreen meeting or I don't have a, and you go, but then, wow, all of a sudden you're there till one o'clock in the afternoon. Like, there's just so much stuff going on. They, so talk yeah. about evergreen. Oh, yes. How's yeah. our, our, our little <laughs> gas fire thing? Well, I just had a meeting on Monday and um, the government has, because we had no, we've had no testing 
agreement in the province of Manitoba to even test so something like this. We've had to use Ontario's requirements and we had to bring someone from Ontario to do it. And all, all that stuff has now gone up to the government of Manitoba. But so really, we're at a bureaucratic standstill. We are at a bureaucratic standstill, which is unfortunate. It is unfortunate because everything I'm hearing suggests that that technology could be extremely oh, could be. useful and quite given everybody's concern about the environment. Yep, I agree 100%. Uh, and you know what, they, uh, this was a little bit different. Like there are other units like this. Yeah. Throughout, and This one's a little more computerized. I mean, it's like everything else. Yeah. Every time you do yeah. something, it gets a little better. And they had to tweak it a few times and a few things they had to fix. But it's, yeah, it's, it's really amazing what it does. Well, so. uh, you were describing a yeah. test run before yes. and just thought, yeah. wow. Yeah, no, it's, and as you say, it doesn't even have to be an evergreen facility. It could be high life. It could be someone that's building a greenhouse. It could be, like, if you had the money, like, they think they, now this again, this is just speculation. They think they can build them for a quarter million dollars. Uh, you know, Good Lord. Uh, yeah. That's so, not a, no, in, in, in the world, that, age, yeah, that's but I mean, not a, ours was more like, between four and five, but they think now that they've got all the all the workings and all understand how it all works. Yes. So we'll see. But you're right in the world we live in. Well, if you can and and a much greener solution, yeah. you start moving these things out. Yeah. You're going to cut down. But I still say we need to look at that major transportation yeah. thing. And it's amazing because when you like we just did a new cell out there, and I think the cell was eight hundred thousand dollars to put garbage into. And again, I'm not on the board like some of those people that have been there. So you could do three of these gas fires for the price of one cell. Well, yeah, exactly. And like the, and this cell, like they're just shocked. What did they say on I really couldn't even believe this, Don. They said on on Saturday, we had our meeting on Monday. On Saturday they had seventy people count cross those scales. 70. 70 people. Wow. So, so, so it's being used. Oh, and that's, uh, that's what everybody at the board table is saying, is saying this cell is going to fill much faster than the last cell. Like it's just because, again, we're growing, right? We're a bigger community. Don't forget, we're one of six partners, right? There's the six other thing is, too, during this pandemic, a yep. lot of people stayed yep. home, yep. renovated, got yep. rid of stuff. Yep. Uh, tore down stuff, yep. all sorts yeah, of things. And we had a flood like in Minnesota. We had a flood in Nipah. Yeah. Like, no, it's, yeah. But they were even shocked. They said they, they, they didn't. They, usually they say October really starts to slow down. Yeah. So. Isn't that interesting? I know it is. Um, you know, I, I didn't, uh, the clinic, of course, I mean, they're just getting, starting to put together some of their numbers on the, the lottery that they were running for their, and I mean, that's not. I don't know if they're still selling tickets or not. I guess I should know that. But anyhow, it sounds like, again, it's been another very successful well, <coughs> and that clinic, are there any more expansions planned? I, I gather. I don't think so. I'm hearing rumors that they're looking for more doctors. Yes, so they are looking for more doctors, but I think they could actually, don't forget right now, every doctor has his, have their own office and their own uh, waiting room, Wait, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think maybe you could start double dipping in there a little bit if you had to, right? So, but no, I don't think there's any, any expansion plans. There. Not that I have, not that I'm aware of, but you're right. They are looking for more doctors. Well, certainly we, we need them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There are a number of people. And I'm thinking a lot of our newcomer families, yeah. uh, obtaining new doctors yeah. and, and yeah. to have a new doctor in Brandon when you live here does I not know. make sense. No, it makes no sense. Uh, I know. For the whole system, right? Yeah. No, I agree. So that's interesting. So that's good. And what's the, and the planning board, of course, I was sitting on the planning board and we're going to have a meeting on Monday. And uh, Jeff was just saying what a, sp like he's the head of, like he's our, he's our rep. He, that just, mm -hmm. the, he's had a, sp they've had a spectacular year in terms of building permits, right? I mean, can you, and, and well, I can't <laughs> believe it. Good <laughs> no. Lord. <laughs> I know. And, you know, not any Rosedale's had building and like we're part, Rosedale's part of it yep. uh, and Lansdowne, Glenelg's part of it. And everybody's just, it's just been that type of. It, it seems that, well, I, I know from the newcomer perspective, people are living, moving outside of Nepal. Yes. And, and we're seeing a bit more of that, especially into the, some of the smaller communities, which is great. Yeah. When I sit with uh, Scott Kinley in Gladstone or I sit with, uh, Frank Taylor, who's a council in Mendoza, they say, wow, like, you know what, we've got a lot of, of high life uh, employees living in our towns too, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's, yeah. it's just nature of the beast. So, yeah, I mean. Anything else coming up in council? <sighs> you know, I don't know. I think I kind of covered everything, Don. I don't know. Um, Committee stuff. You were doing some work, I, I gathered, uh, around the handy van. Yes, so that's How's it. that going? Yeah, I think it's going good. Like, uh, it had just been kind of, not that the ball had been dropped on it, but you know how sometimes uh, committees, 
you know, they just, they kind of drift, not drift along, but the committee sometimes need to get reinvigorated and they've just made a decision now that they're going to take a look at the handy van and make sure that, in, especially now in the COVID world, it has a chance for them to rebuild all their uh, policies and uh, guidelines. And so they've done all that. So I think that, that's been a really positive step there that they've done that. And uh, Is it still being used? Yeah, and it'll start coming back. It'll start coming back really strong. No, I, I, again, I think this winter will be quiet. I think we're in our last quiet winter. And then I think once spring comes and like, I really believe, you know, some of these things have their own, their own inertia. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I think the pandemic, it, it doesn't matter. At some point, people are just going to say, I got to live. Right. I, I have to move forward. Right. Well, I'm, ostensibly, it was originally designed or, or, or planned for helping seniors yes. and people who yeah. had a physical yeah. uh, thing. But yeah. We're 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 a different kind of community now. It's, it's actually that that's not there. Yeah, no, it's they're just act, simply they're actually allowed in there in there, and I think it was always in their bylaws or their mission statement. They actually are allowed to uh, take anybody, and I think that they're going to make that more visible now too. Okay. Like you know that you don't have to be an age group, or you don't have to have a disability, yeah, okay. or you don't have no. So I think that is a that that is going to be more commonplace now. But um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you look through our, I mean, okay, county courthouse. I mean, we had some issues there with our roof leaking. Uh, but again, that was at the council table. Maranca reported on that. And Daryl, they, they said on that committee that they, they had some money from a grant that was sitting there that they had been trying to use up. So now that's going towards that. They are going to repair the roof on that because it actually has soaked through a little bit in the... So tell me about that, because I'd heard talk at some point reconsidering using that and maybe tying it to things like uh, uh, maybe a new new council. Yep, I agree. Uh, and again, placement. you know, it's just it's it's unfortunate. And you're right. The, with so much going on, these are things that are hard to get to the front of the table, mm -hmm. right, to the front of the line. Because I agree 100 percent with you. I mean, uh, we have we're we're we're, s we're three partners, are right. We're yeah. we're uh, Rosedale, we're North Cypress, Langford. And we are a town of Nipah. And uh, Lynette, Lansdowne, Glenelg, they stepped away quite a few years ago, so they're not part of it anymore. So those are the three partners at that table. They each have two representatives there. So, yeah, no, it, it, that is a big discussion, right? And I guess, the, yeah, I mean, that, that it will, at some point, it's going to be a very big discussion, right? Because as Maranka said last night or Tuesday night at the council meeting, it was 83 or 84 is when they did the last big renovation there. Oh, wow. I don't know if you remember. Were you here in 83 or 84? Yes, yes. Just, it just come. So remember when they had that referendum on whether what we should do with the county courthouse? Uh, do you remember that? Yes. You know, whether to knock yes. it down or whether yeah. to preserve it. And I mean, it was an overwhelming majority to preserve it. And I think there was a million dollars poured into it then. And that was all provincial federal money, I think, at that time. But at the end of the day, it is an extremely difficult building to work with in our world of accessibility. You know, so I mean, it's a you know, it's it's hard to get people from floor to floor. I mean, we'd have to we'd have to really reconfigure that whole construction. I mean, that little elevator they have at the back, it's yeah. not it's not going to work. It would have to be a much better structure. Uh, the walls are hard to move in that building. Uh, you oh, know, it's an old building. Yeah, it was built. Yeah, the, the old way. Yeah, eighteen eighty something. Yeah, I mean, the, elec wall, the, the electric hall has been upgraded, but I mean, yeah. even in eighty three. I'm assuming in 1983 there was no internet, so I mean, and like everything's just, you know, it's, it's just changed. it's changed, right? So I I think it's more a question of, you're right. Does it become something more historical, where it just gets used for for this is something that you know for yeah. the for the ages, yeah. right? Yeah. Or does it get used more for the 21st century? But in my mind, and we haven't had a chance to discuss it. In my mind, that probably means adding on to it, building around it, yes, doing something that... Maintaining its integrity, yes, but at the yeah. same time uh, improving the functionality yeah. by, uh, by new building yeah. that and sort of fits. Yeah. yeah, and you could get the same, not the same, but you could get bricks that look yeah. a lot the same. And I yeah. think that's, so I think that's the big discussion. The big discussion is though you're going to have to have those two options, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and again, I just, you know what, it's something we'd love to sit down and talk about. I mean, even the town of Nipah is starting to get squeezed for space, right? So you're right, but that would be great. Yeah. Maybe we could pack the council chambers back over there, right? And I mean, that's a great spot up there. 
I'd be tempted to level the floor. I wouldn't have us looking down on people like we were the king and queen. But, yeah. You know, but I mean, but again, to do that, we would have to have a elevator that goes to the top floor. Top floor, yeah. So, but that would gain open up space for us here with our with our town office, right? Because um, you know, just everything is getting bigger and bigger, right? With more and and more roles, and and we might maybe might have to add extra staff. So, now I know <laughs> economic development is one of those programs or aspects that things are often in motion yes. but you can't say much that's about that's exactly correct so can <laughs> what can you say about potential economic development because as we mentioned earlier we are very much a single industry town here yeah. although we have some very thriving alter other businesses as well but there's room for more. I think I, I think I'll just repeat back what you said. There's always things in motion, but we can't talk about it. <laughs> well, that's a cop out if I ever heard one. <laughs> I could talk about Maryland's and her big idea, though. I mean, she oh yes, had, please. Yeah, so yes, she right. had, I went to so ask that you was about last that. Thursday. Anyhow, w I went to it for most of the day, and it. Uh, you know what? That's I really I really enjoy that. That's how uh, many were this? Uh, there was only s five. Okay. And I think the year before, well, they didn't have it last year. And then in 19, I think they had eight. They have had as many as 10. Yes. But because of the pandemic. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, but no, it's, it's always exciting to see the people get up there and talk. And, well, look and at the new businesses that have come. I know. As, through yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And, it, and Maryland does a ton of work on that. So, no, that was, that, that was, that was good. And, of course, you know that... Uh, Arts Forward is, is having their grand reopening this uh, Friday from, yes, tomorrow from 7 to 9. Yes, yes, and looking I, forward to yeah, that. That's, I mean, yeah, they've no, been closed for the entire pandemic. Yeah, and they wanted to introduce their new administrator there, of course, with yeah. uh, Yvonne Doble. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe she's not no. Doble anymore. She's. Uh, I can't remember the name. I, I just know her well, we'll as call, Yvonne. Yeah, we'll call her Yvonne, yes. yes. And then, of course, they, they want to show off. Their, they've repainted and redone the floors. And yeah. So, so, yeah, and I'm looking forward to that, too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, this, you know, I guess I'm, I'm always amazed how, you, you know, when I'm sitting here with you, I can maybe not have, I can not seem like I'm running out of things to talk about, but there's always so much in motion that, like, it's certainly not that we're not busy. I yeah. mean, yeah. Well, Nepal's been on the cusp for a while, yeah. but we've got so much other stuff that's happened. It's not like, you're sitting there, the potential's there, and nothing's gone on. Yes. When you start listing off, all conceivably up to 400 new living yeah. spots are yeah. in the process of yeah. being built. Yeah. Uh, we have space for more more economic. Absolutely. Development. Yeah. Um, uh, commercial stuff. I look at commercially what's happened. It would be nice to see a little more in the downtown. Yes, I agree. But uh, when you look at it, yeah. look at all the, the 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 entrepreneurs that have opened up stores, bakeries. Uh -huh. Um, That's funny. I saw Kevin Harris the other day. Oh, yes. He was taking a piece of plywood in, so I just stopped to help him open the door there to get him in there. And I hadn't been into his pet yeah. store, but it looks really good. Oh, wow. I, I popped uh, in for It's uh, not oh, quite open yet. Yeah. Popped, I was really impressed with the space, with the, with the amount of, of, of uh, product yeah. he has in there, yeah. um, the ability to, to groom. Yeah. And when you look at it, let's face it, we've not had a dedicated animal store no. In Nepal, I, I can't, I don't even recall one. I can't uh, Because see everybody, one. if they need yeah. a lot of this stuff, has to go out of Nepal. So it's yeah. really nice to be looking at uh, a homegrown kind of I said thing. to Ken, I, I said to Ken, I, I, I said to him, to uh, Kevin. Kevin, thank you. I said to Kevin, you just can't get it out, you can't get retail out of your blood, right? And he goes, well, Blake, he said, I think this will be a much more nine to five job. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to see people yeah. from within the community, yeah. you know, uh, uh, put it together. It, I was really impressed with what they did with that space because I saw it before it was. And what was it, it was before? Um, uh, well, that was part of the co-op. Okay. Remember, but way back. So has it just been sitting empty? Yeah. Okay. Totally. Okay. And, and he refurbished yeah. floors and yeah. all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, very exciting. No, that is exciting. Yeah. And I think he and I understand he also went around and and lobbied a lot of people who have animals and he has brought in specific what they want. Yes. So, I mean, good for him. He did, he yeah. did a lot of research yeah. in terms of looking yeah. at it, because as as animal owners ourselves, uh, it's really nice to think that we are able to be able to to source locally yeah. things like. Uh, if you've got dog grooming or if yeah. there's other kinds of needs. Yeah. Really nice selection. So, yeah, so it's, it's just a new new, new place. I mean, the bakeries have just gone great guns. I know. And, and some of the grocery stores and yeah. our restaurants are pretty. Yeah. 
That's what I always tell the newcomers, you know, when I'm talking to them on that Zoom call, I say, you know what, you're going to feel very comfortable when you get to this town. I mean, you know, we are, this Filipino community has, has really grown here and become, you know, so integrated with, with the, the old part of the town. A lot of South Asian. You, yeah. Any of the grocery stores here, it doesn't matter whether it's Co-op or, yeah. or Safeway Sobeys yeah. or, or, or Blake's. Whatever they call yeah, it now, yeah, I, I, it, yeah. I, I just remember yeah, Shoppies. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> has been for yeah, decades. No, yeah. uh, but but they have uh, uh, really gone backward, not backwards, overboard. Yeah. Not overboard. They've gone forward yeah. with uh, southeastern food sessions, yeah. sections, yeah. Uh, more more world sections stuff, and then yeah. uh, some Mexican foods because we have people coming from Spanish speaking countries, um, mm. and uh, really it's. Yeah, it's quite, the dynamics change. We need a shoe store. Yeah, it's wouldn't have been nice. Where's Barry Long, eh? Yeah, yeah. And, and we need uh, a men's store. Yes. I you know, know, for... And for, maybe it'll come back. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, uh, it could be. Yeah. But it, Nipua certainly changed. I know. Yeah. No. You, you and I, we weren't born here, but we've been here a long yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Seen a lot happen yeah, in the no, last 40 I, years. No, I agree. And I think you'll see just as much happen in the next four years. And I think that'll, yeah. I can't even, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It will be. Um, uh, anything else you want to add? Because we're coming close to. Are we okay? To, I, to the end. No, I don't. I, um, I don't think so, Don. I mean, obviously, I mean we're getting ready. To, but winter's coming on, and I mean the the the, outs, the town crews have been working hard trying to get uh, Davidson Street cleaned up and snow cleaning. You ready for that? Yeah, we're ready for that. It'll be sa the same group. It'll still it'll be uh, the, the same local people that do that for us. So the Smiths and the bakers. I, I I've I've often thought that was a. A good move to come back to local. Yeah, yeah, and it's worked well. Yeah, and we had a discussion with uh, OSS, the garbage people. Yeah, and uh, you know they we had some concerns, and they stepped up right away. I mean, they've they've added a truck in. I think we talked yes. about that. Before. Yes, and that's uh, I'm noticing. Bang, yeah. they're early back, yeah. early again. Yeah. Nothing's missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, so it was, and they were very system. good. They were very apologetic and said, you know what, that's not who we are, and we definitely want to be the type of supplier yeah. that you, you know. So that's worked out really well. So I was really happy to see that. Um, otherwise, no, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're getting, like I said, settling in for winter and putting our plans into place for, for next year. I mean, the winters, I'd say that we live in an interesting climate, right? Where, you know yeah. what, you can kind of wind down some of those big projects yes. and, and get ready to, to lay out what we're going to do for the next, the next year. Speaking of big projects, are, have any of the councillors got any on the go? Uh, like in terms of personally? Well, just just projects that they're working on as for the, for the town. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm, well, Murray, of course, Murray's on the clinic, so yeah. he's always working hard there with Prairie Mountain. Uh, Brian's always part of. I mean, his big part is hand, right, and the RCMP, so he's part yeah. of that. Jason, if you listen to our council meetings, I mean, Jason's always got a report on the library. So. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, no, he loves the library. He's is got, the library doing well? The library's actually done very well during the pandemic. Oh, that's it, excellent yeah, to Which hear. is interesting. Excellent and, the, and then Maranka, of course, she's got the handy van yeah. that she's always working on. And then Mr. Pudlow, Darren, he's uh, part of the Yellowhead, right? Yeah. So, no, they've all got their own roles and they've all settled in really well. And I, yeah, no, I think they've, they've been very, yeah. And I like the way it comes to the table and... Uh, you know, I know at the beginning we were, we, people said, well, you know, you guys don't seem to, you know, you don't seem to have much discussion or you don't seem to have much disagreement. But I, I, I don't think that's changed, but I just think there's a much more comfort level now where there is more discussion going on and maybe not always on camera. People always seem to forget, right? When we have a meeting on Tuesday, which was from 7 to 7.30, we were there at 5. So, you know, we had, we had sat there for two hours and discussed. And you know what, and, and, and when you think of it logistically, that's probably not a bad process because you get a lot of stuff hashed out that you don't need to in camera, but there you finalize your discussion. Yep, that's right. Have further, yep. and, but you've got a lot of the nuts and bolts out and yep. some basic stuff out for people to think yeah, about. Yeah, and sometimes even in those meetings, we'll say, well, yep. you know, when it actually does get to council, we're still not going to agree on this. And yeah. we say, well, that's fine. Yeah, no you know, problem. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, you're right. Everybody's had a yeah. chance to express their opinion. But yeah, I think people uh, don't understand how much goes on behind. Well, them. I'd rather see a succinct hour, hour and a half council meeting yeah. than four hours. Yes. Where yes. you've already done the previous yeah. two at a different off camera. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, then you sit down and we hear actually uh, where, where it's going. Yeah. So. so, yeah, no, I'm, it's, yeah. Um. 
Well, uh, the hour's gone by fairly quickly. I think we're, we're coming to the yeah. close. No <laughs> final comments? No, no I don't think so. No, I think I'm good. Thank you, Don. Appreciate you. Appreciate the work the council's doing. Once again, uh, viewers, if you have any questions, anything you'd like to bring up here, call the TV station. No problem. Uh, ask for it to be uh, forwarded to council checkup. And I will certainly ask questions. I have no problems doing that. Um, that's why they're there. They're there to answer the question, and if we need to bring in others for certain questions to be answered, uh, we certainly have done that before. That's not a problem. We thank you for viewing, uh, enjoying the last of the warm fall weather. We seem to be moving into more seasonal temperatures. I can't believe that Halloween's just a week in or so away. I know. And then we're sort of on that slope until we hit Christmas, and... Wow, so thank you to all for viewing in. Thank you to our mayor, Blake McCutcheon, for coming back again. I'm your host, Don Walmsley, and I look forward to you tuning in again the next time we have Council Checkup. Bye for now. <laughs>